Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railway Skillscast session. We are of course live, so you'll be joining me this morning to find out more about adding details to your signal boxes. We'll be looking at some more of the classic signal box designs today and the different items that are in the interiors. I'll be showing you some of the details of the kits that we have available right now, covering all the major UK model railway scales from N-Gage through 00 and right up to O-Gage 2. The skills you need today are pretty much the same for the different kits in all of those scales. So do feel free to have a look at the kits that I'm showing here today. I've got links to all of them in the description there. We've also got information there on the Metcalf card version of this kit that I do not have here today, but we also do stock that too. So. Let's take a look at some of those kits in a little bit more detail. You do get pretty much everything you need for a UK signal box interior from the late Victorian era right through to today. Although this style of classic signal box is seen less and less on the UK's railway system, you do still get these in certain rural parts of the country, whereas most of the major urban railways are now controlled by computers and power signal boxes which are located in those areas. So you can still have one if you're a modern modeler, but the real detail today is for the classic steam era modeler recreating this on their layout. So just to show an example of what we're talking about here, this is a Chroma in Norfolk. And this really is the epitome, as you can see, of a classic signal box design. So we have here a few different components, some of which I'll be going into in more detail. I'll be showing you just how they come in the kit here too. And all importantly, why do you paint certain bits, certain colors? What's the significance of the different colors of the levers there, for example? That will be something I'll be going into in more detail there. So great to see you all there in the chat too. Good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing well. So. Let's have a look at some of the kits that we have available right now. Starting off, we have the Ratio N-Gage kit that you see here. This comes with a selection of plastic parts. For this image, they have been pre-painted, but they do come in grey plastic for you to paint in your own chosen colours. You also get the brass fittings there. Now, this is something that's exclusive to the N-Gage kit. These are to enhance the windows on your signal boxes with etched brass window frames on them too and then you get some of the various signaling equipment which i'll be going into the specifics of very shortly indeed skipping to the o gauge you can see here the signal box itself is not included but you can see the painted equipment in place in this particular model again the plastic kit that you have here is very easy to put together for all the different components and you will find that you don't quite need all the components in some certain signal boxes. So we'll go through the do's, do nots, and what you need and what you don't to. So let's head over to the double O gauge variation. Again, as part of the ratio range, this is a really good example to talk through the different parts that we have on offer here today. Again, these have been pre-printed for the purposes of the photograph, but they come in a clear gray plastic for the kit itself. So heading from left to right, we have the books on the shelf, which is the logs of the different trains that would have passed the signal box to make sure they were running to time and also made sure that there were the correct formations there too. These will be kept in the signal box for reference by any management at any point. Underneath that, you have the desk where these train logs were kept and written as the trains passed too. Heading over to what we call the lever frame. This is the huge steel frame that contained the levers for various different positions and uses on the railway. But we'll talk about some of the items that surround that first. On the left, we have a big wheel, almost like a, a ship's wheel, really. This was used for opening level crossings and working level crossing gates too. So you can put one of these in your signal box but do bear in mind that if you're near a level crossing, it's pretty much an essential item. If not, you don't really need one. But if you want to put one in your box, you certainly can do so. Looking at the lever frame itself, on top of the shelf there, we have the various different items of what's known as block equipment. 
and token equipment. Now, these are for safe control of the railway, making sure there that the communication through the bell system we can see on the left to the other signal boxes down the line to inform them the correct codes for the trains that are heading towards them. A different bell code sent through the signals would then communicate that a different type of train is on the way. The other thing there as well is the token system and the block system indicating that a train is where it should be on the track there too. Some signal boxes do have the token system where you can give them the token, which is the particular piece a driver needs to have the authority to go onto a section of track. Just above that there, you get a diagram of the area covered by the signal box too. And in some cases, they do work with that block system. So they'll tell you exactly on the map there where those different pieces are. On the right, we have a few commodities. We have a stove to keep warm, we have a chair to keep comfy, and we have a cupboard to keep lots and lots of tea and later on, of course, coffee as well in there and the signalman's all important supplies. So the lever frame itself, this is what controls the points. This is what controls the signals. This is what controls pretty much everything that moves that you can move from a signal box. The levers pull forward to activate and then go back to reset. And the colours can change a little bit between the different regions. But the general UK standard, if you're looking at getting your paints out to paint some of these, I'll go very quickly through them now for you. Red controlled a stop or a shunt signal. Black controls a set of points. Yellow controls a distance signal. Blue controls a facing point lock and white is a spare one that you can use for something else if you're extending the railway or putting in different signals in the future there too. So as I said, this is one of the standard systems for the UK, but it did differ between the different regions and companies. Here, for example, we have a green lever over there on the left, and here we have a range of the colors that we just mentioned there too, as well as more of those block section equipment so we can just about see the map above the signal box there too so i hope that's given you a bit of a definition of what the different parts are of course you can always refer to the manuals included with the kits themselves which will give you a full indication of the different parts and their intended uses in your signal box but as always, I would recommend doing some research, having a look at images of the insides of some of the signal boxes you may want to detail on your layout to add a lot more information to them too. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the kit. I thought for a change, I'd feature the O-Gage version of the kit. It's not that often that we feature the O-Gage kits here. And as said, towards the start of the stream, these kits with their plastic sprues are very similar across the three different scales there. So the skills we need today for our O-Gage set are pretty much very commonplace for the different kits. Now I've got my usual tools here too. I've got my trusty scalpel all ready to go. I've got a set of tweezers there. I have a steel rule and I have some soup glue and a cocktail stick to apply that with. If you need any of those tools, feel free to head over to our website where we do have those available. I'll just build up some of the more basic parts of the kit here for you today, but as we expect, full instructions are included with exactly how to put the different parts together. As we can see there, and some indication on painting, which goes into a little bit more detail of what I covered there previously. So as usual with plastic kits, we'll find that they are attached to the sprue very gently with one of the pieces there. So we're just going to build up one of these token exchange equipments, really easy to do. Just making sure there we cut away. Sometimes you do need a bit of a tighter cut. As you can see, you can do these tighter sprues, of course, with a set of small cutters. You'll see that there's just a little bit of flash on the bottom of that there. So just gently scraping that back or sanding that back with a sanding block will be adequate there too. And then as you can see, that will then join onto the rear of this particular item. So I'll just put that together for you now. Just making sure there that we're keeping the knife away from our fingers, but at the same time, giving it the strength it needs to cut through the sprue. 
just trim that little bit of the flash at the bottom there. So my top tip for glue, which I'm sure a lot of you will know far better than I will now. I've said it that many times, but it's a really golden secret, so I'll share it as many times as I can. Always put a tiny bit of glue onto a scrap piece of plastic, as you can see here. Never put the glue straight from the bottle onto your model as that will end up damaging the model and you'll certainly get far too much glue on there than you need. Little bit of glue on the end of a cocktail stick, less is more with this. You'd be very surprised just how much of the glue, well, how little should I say actually, of the glue it takes to put this together. I'm just making sure that we're putting enough glue in the places we want this to join. I would put these together before painting them as well. I've just seen that come up in the chat. I would recommend doing that. You'll often find that, as we saw in some of the prototype pictures that I will put up in a second for you again, that a lot of these pieces of token equipment, as I'm just putting that there now, just making sure that's firmly pressed together. A lot of pieces of this equipment were sort of made in wood or they had a wood surround on them. So we can just see there in this signal box, you can see the wooden style varnished surrounds on this particular equipment. As for the interiors of the signal boxes themselves, you generally find that they were painted in colors similar to the companies of the railways that operated them. Although no two really were the same, you would as a rule find that London, Midland, Scottish signal boxes would have a maroon flavor. Southern railway signal boxes having the Southern green, Great Western, of course, with their green livery too, or the chocolate and cream colour scheme that you'd see on some of the coaching stock. And London North Eastern, mainly with these sort of blue livery that you saw there too. But it can really differ between different buildings. So if you're looking for the exact paints, again, I just recommend having a bit of a look at the signal box that you're intending to detail or getting some prototype inspiration or if you're really not sure do leave a comment underneath the video or get in touch with our customer experience team who's more than happy to give you a hand there too so i've just built up one of our token equipments just making sure there that the join is absolutely as it should be so you can just about see there that this is all built up and ready to go i'll just put that out of the way over there. The lever frames themselves look a lot more complicated than they are. And the great thing with these is you can pose them in pretty much any position on the frame. So just making sure we're cutting in the right place there. And then you can have as many or as little as these levers as you want. You can build up the lever frame to be for a huge frame. You do get 12 in the packet, but you can extend and extend and extend, or you can take away and have the different levers there. Now you'll see that that slots in. So pushing that gently in, it might not come up the best on the camera, unfortunately, with the way I'm having to do it. But just making sure that slots in there between the two. And choosing where to slot it will be where you have it on your lever frame. I've put it roughly in the middle here so we can have a figure pulling it forward. But you can, of course, then move it along as you wish and then repose it. Once you've got it in the place you'd like, our good old friend, little bit of glue on a cocktail stick, just gluing that into place. These are really easy to put together. It's to build up more of the frames, as you see here, they just clip onto each other. So once you've cut them away, I'll just put another one there for you just to show you how that works. Find the sprue that I've taken it away from. So cutting right up against the edge of the frame. Sometimes it can be a little stubborn, as you see here. And again, I would usually spend a couple of seconds just cleaning these up before I attach them. And you can see that's just got a little lip on the edge of it down there. That would then slot straight on. Tiny little bit of glue on the top of that lip. And you can see there our lever frame starts to come together. You can put as many as you want on of those. They come in sprues, as you see here. 
with four frames and four levers so you can really start to build those up and then get those painted in the colors we have seen there too so it really is an extension of that from there it's gluing the different parts together locating them in the correct place in your signal box some items you'll need some items you won't need on your layout you do have all the different cupboards chairs frames etc etc coming in the kit this is the o gauge version that i've shown here today as you can see here i'll show you an example of this all fully painted and detailed but the skills are exactly the same whether you're building up the n gauge or the o gauge kit there too as you can imagine it's a little bit more fiddly in the smaller scales but at the same time if you follow the tips in today's video and if you have a look at the building plastic kits video on our youtube channel too you'll find out a little bit more information on these so this is something that comes in at a really cheap price all of these kits are available now for under 10 pounds and the card version from Metcalf in double O gauge is even cheaper than that. So if you do head over to the link in the description, you'll see the full information on all of these kits there. And they are a great way to build up some skills and learn to detail your model railway. Signal boxes, especially the classic designs with their large windows available for seeing as many trains as possible with the best visibility going past them. It is something that you do need to put a little bit of detail inside, really, to really enhance it and add a real bit of life to your layout, too. And it's a one I'd really recommend for those of you who are thinking about learning some new skills, especially in lockdown at the moment. If you want a kit to build in an evening, something that's really simple to put together, but will look fantastic on your model railway. If you have a signal box that needs a bit of TLC needs a bit of attention. These are a great way to go to learn how to build plastic kits and do some of the basic painting too. And of course, learn about the real railways and how they operated too. So I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I do hope you've been inspired to model some detailed signal boxes on your layout. As said, my top tip for today, apart from the glue, is to have a look at some real life inspiration. There's many of these signal boxes still out there on preserved railways and on some of the more rural parts of the UK railway system too. So you can really get some inspiration on exactly what parts of the kits you'll need to build and where you will need to put them on your layout too. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page and follow our Facebook page for all the latest model railway news. We've got hundreds of these skills cast sessions on there too, so you can really learn the basic skills that are really easy to pick up to enhance your model railway. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.